So this morning, doing this video, will be the very first morning. I'm using the GoPro 8. Now one thing about this GoPro 8 is that I have to specifically rely on internal mics. I do not see any place whatsoever where I can use an external mic. So hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. Let's get our fan going. And this is a River to Sea Ruckus repaint. This is a four piece repaint for in three, two, one. This is a four piece repaint for Mr. Baker. Um, I have two sexy shads, which I don't think I've, maybe I've never done a sexy shad. Um, maybe I have. They all kind of blur together. I've got to do a red delta crawl. And then we're going to do a black and chrome or black and silver. So I'm going to start with that one first. I've already primed everything white. These baits are beat up, but they're, they're in fairly decent shape for what you have. The airbrush is fired up. I have a decent temperature in the room for painting. Um, this is week number four with no heat in the building. Uh, the only blessings that I have are is that I have built a business enough to where I could afford heaters of my own, so I brought those with me from the other place, but if I were in the warehouse with the rest of the crew, it would be about 48 degrees. And that's, um, that's crazy. That is a, I feel for these guys. So it is a issue which hopefully the leaser landlord will resolve shortly. I'm not sure what the issue is and why it's taken four weeks to even get a, a contact a reply out of the guy that leases this. But Sure, it's a headache that Mike would rather not have to deal with. But let me tell you what, it is cold. It is cold at Bullshed today, folks. So I've got now a pearl white over all of these. And onto that, let's see, I think probably be the easiest to do that red crawl. Now I know you guys just saw crawfish yesterday or today. I'm not sure when you'll see this video. Uh, kind of reversed the course because of other things that I had to do to fit into my um, time slot and schedule yesterday. So editing probably is a little backwards on this. So let's do this red first. This is my version of a red delta crawl. Now on this, I'm going to add some fluorescent orange to the belly. And this, again, I, I don't do, I've been doing a lot of swim baits lately, which is awesome. Except that crawl patterns have kind of fallen by the wayside because you just don't see a whole lot of crawl on swim baits. But you do see them on just about every other bait in the business. So we're going to get that nice and dark and bright. There we go. Perfect. And now to that, I'm going to add some red. Just regular standard red. I think I might add a little bit of fluorescent red just above this fluorescent orange. Only because I know it's gonna look really, really good to help this bait pop. Get the goo off of this. Just a few drops ought to do it. That nice bright fluorescent red. 
That is a great color. We're going to come back over the top of that with some standard bright red. On most, if not all, repaints, unless it was already a ghost color, I will always prime white or black. A lot of people ask if you can use black. You can. Black actually makes a really good underlayer for some. Fluorescence for sure. All right, now we've got our layered up from fluorescent orange all the way to red. Good stuff. I've cleaned out the chamber. We're going to let this kind of sit and blend. I'm not heat setting that because I want the reds and oranges to kind of blend together and the best way to do that is just to leave it alone the next one we've got i'm going to grab some silver i hope silver and get that going on over top of this pearl Yes, you can see that just a little bit of red popped out. That's okay. I'm totally cool with that because on the very throat of this bait, we are going to have a little bit of red. So I'm actually going to hand set up as we go. Always want to try and turn the oopses into happy accidents if you can. Might add just a little bit more silver to this to mute it a little. But again, really no harm, no foul. Because we will be coming over that. Now, this is going to be the silver and black back. Also, going to add a little bit of silver to these sexy shads. Now, the sexy shad ruckus is traditionally a white with just a little bit of blue and yellow stripe. Nothing super special going on with their sexy shad. Marcel said that I could trick it out just a little bit, but I really want to keep this simple. Uh, he tournament fishes. So I want to try and keep this as close to his confidence colors as I can. And there we have it now. A lot of times you'll see just a hint of gray in the very top area of the sexy shad. And we're certainly gonna run true to form with this. Just like two and a half, maybe three drops. Not much. Just wanna cover the, the top portion of this with something that's just a little bit darker than silver or a pearl white. These uh, River to Sea Ruckuses are certainly baits that keep on giving. do the top portion of this as well. Just get it down a little bit on the nose, not far. And there we have it. We are going to heat set all of these because it is a little chilly. dealing with color and blending when it's super cold and now that I have the fan running it's kind of opened up a little vent because it has a, a little flap that closes but doing that when it's cold the, the paint doesn't set as quickly so it is a good idea to heat set when you have super cold temperatures um, it's probably let's see let's see what it is in here 
it is it's just made it above 60 in here it was uh, about 42 degrees when i got in this morning in this office we're going to set these two sexy shadows off to the side we're going to concentrate on this black backed silver and with that i am going to use this has become one of my favorites this um, kind of a mottled snake skin M-O-T-T-L-E and then we're going to pull the rest of these stencils out and I want to use the solid one as well. The solid is going to go over the back. Just going to use some jet black. Put that in the chamber here. One thing that helps enormously is that I have a heater source right under there and the heat rises so this airbrush and the hose and the chamber stay a little bit warmer than the rest of the room, which is key. Absolutely a good thing. So I'm just going to set this down. Actually what I want to do is make sure my pressure is down and I'm down to about 15. I'm just going to lay this on here. Face of this as well, and then on both sides, just come back in and do a little splotch, and that will give you that appearance that you've done one strip instead of four individual strips. The sides, we're just going to run a little bit down. We're not going to do the entire thing and we're going to do it in a more modeled fashion. Give it just a tiny bit of character because one cool thing about this is that it's got some inserts where that's just the scale, the tip of the scale, and not the full block. We are using Brian Best Creature Feature Stencils. And then as we fade further down, we just do a little bit lighter of an approach. So that, that will fade down the bait. You always want to make sure your scales, uh, you know, I screw up every once in a while. You want to make sure the scales are going in the right direction. It is helpful. And there you have it. So now I'm going to add just a little bit of dark around this eye. Maybe, maybe throw some detail black magenta underneath, kind of enhance the top of that. Now on this one, I already have black loaded into the chamber from the uh, black back silver. And we'll, we might trick out the pectoral fins a little bit on that. But because I already have black in here, I can go ahead and start the cross stencil on this. We're just going to add a couple of lines because it's a shorter bait. So I really only need two to three cross segments on this bait total. So we'll put the rest of this together. of the helmet. Keep that nice and dark 
on this Delta Cross. And also come down here. And I might go ahead and do just this little bit here. Put that under layer on. Flip this over. Do the helmet on this side. and his instructions on what colors he wanted. I'm totally cool with that. Most of the time they'll let me do my own little spin on it, which is awesome. But some are instruction specific. Flip this over and I, on the lipless I can use the top of this. Generally, I can still clip this on, so you still have two points of contact with your helping hands. Bring this down this way. And then just grab these other segments. Put the belly on. do it. I think I want to do this little deal here. Just finish that. Go from there. Now the only difference on these deltas is that I give them a little bit of a beaten up look. I can do that from either side. So this is just going to get a kind of a ghosting effect. And then we'll flip it back over and do the back. detailing before we finish this one up. Just add a little bit of white. To represent the natural bumps that they have on their segments. down their back. And voila! We have the Delta Crawl. Without eyes, but we'll get those in. On the Sexy Shad. We're going to keep them just about as simple as the original River to Sea pattern. What you could see that was left of the bait. These baits have been beaten up really, really hard. But as far as doing the line, we're just going to follow this natural medial curve. Pull that back just a little bit more. And we're going to run right 
straight down that median line. Do the same thing here. Maybe run back. We're gonna do the same thing with this one. You just wanna get that trigger real light and get as close to the bait as you can without pushing the, the paint hard enough to splatter it. Just a real light trigger connection. Now you have that real clean line on your bait. Now they use a bright blue on this. I'm also gonna put just a hint of yellow on the nose here. And we're gonna turn that a little bit orange. Get the rest of this out of here. And hopefully, my whole goal in all of this is not just to teach you how I paint, but to give you ideas on how you can do it differently. Create your own deal. I can't tell you how many people reach out to me and tell me that they've learned a lot. And that is extremely humbling. And I really appreciate it. And what's even more special than that is when you guys show me everything that you've been into. The next question is what color are we gonna use for the blue? I think I think I'm gonna use this pearl. I don't think I've opened it yet. I have not. Brand new pearl blue a standard but it's a very bright blue so I think that's going to be a great color for this sexy shad in keeping in tradition with sexy shads it's blue it's yellow it's a little bit of gray mostly white it's a little shake there all my yellows out because we don't want to turn this thing green. Probably have way more paint than I need, but I do want to push some of that in case there was still a little bit of residual yellow. Now on this one, we're going to go back to that solid snake skin here, or scaling. It's a scale. I think uh, on creature features for Brian, I think he has it listed as a snake skin. But just like we did with the black on, on silver, we're gonna come down this bait and then come up on the nose and then go to the side, nice and light. The other side nice and light. Just paint and repeat, do the same thing. If there's any excess, now would be a good time. Still keep this. This is the same bench. I just brought it from Arkansas to Georgia. So it has been a traveling bench for sure. Hopefully you guys are doing well. There's a uh, half, I think half of the northeast is buried under a few feet of snow. So if you are stuck inside and you happen to be an airbrush painter of lures, this is the perfect day to grab some cocoa, some coffee, or your favorite imbibement and, uh, and play along. There we go. I'm just going to fade this down. I'm not going to fade it uh, at the right side here. I'm not going to fade it with a different color or with a different uh, stencil. Sorry. Lapse there. A little time lapse. In my conversation with you guys. But I am just going to lightly shoot down the side just a little bit, real light, so that it fades, like it would on any other sexy shad. And come back and do the same thing on the other bait. Nice and light. Just fades away. Flip the other side. Nice and light. And there you have it. Now we just need
need the shad dots on three of these. I've decided that before I put the shad dots on, which I'm going to do the traditional old style way, I'm kind of old school with that. We're just going to grab a Q-tip. I am going to add just a little bit of this pearlescent. I really just think it goes a long way. It really brightens the bait up. Belt. Knock out all of them. Even the crawl. We're just going to add a little bit of that sunburst fluorescent. set that off camera on these shad dots lots of people have lots of different ways of doing them I'm just showing you one simple effective way I think this is the most frequent way that I've shown you how I do them I've done it with an airbrush the biggest thing is consistency you want to make sure you're hitting the same spot on both sides planned in advance and if you're doing a run of the same bait for example these four are all the exact same size we're able to see ruckus is it a 50 you just put it right here just brace your hand drop it right behind that gill plate guide it in nice and light so that you're not dropping a huge shad dot onto that and then I just like to reload before each new bait so that it's skinny again because when you press that down your uh, q-tip does get a little bit bigger those sexy shads we've got that silver back I almost want to throw a little you know me and my detail black magenta I almost want to throw a little bit of a darker on here but nah, I'm gonna leave it as it is kind of like the way it came out that is what I've got for you guys today we're gonna drop regular silver eyes onto all these except for the red that's gonna get black eyes to imitate the black eyes you'd see on a crawfish and I hope you've enjoyed the show. I will see you bright and early, probably later on this week, for an update, show you these finished products before they jet out the door. Thanks for stopping by. It's always good to see you. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.